Hi. We are going to listen to the story today, Giraffes Can't Dance. We're going to listen to it on a CD, and I'm going to hold up and read, hold up the book for you as we go along. And as we go, I'm going to pause the CD so that we can ask some questions as we go to think about what we're reading. Okay, so we're going to read Giraffes Can't Dance by Giles Andre and Guy Parker Reese. It's a really great book. Giraffes Can't Dance by Giles Andrea and Guy Parker Reese. Gerald was a tall giraffe whose neck was long and slim. But his knees were awfully crooked and his legs were rather thin. He was very good at standing still and munching shoots off trees. But when he tried to run around, he buckled at the knees. Now every year in Africa, they hold the jungle dance where every single animal turns up to skip and prance. And this year, when the day arrived, poor Gerald felt so sad because when it came to dancing, he was really very bad. The warthog started waltzing and the rhinos rocked and rolled. The lions danced the tango that was elegant and bold. The chimps all did the cha-cha with a very Latin feel and eight baboons then teamed up for a splendid Scottish reel. Gerald swallowed bravely as he walked toward the floor. But the lions saw him coming, and they soon began to roar. Hey, look at Comzy Gerald, the animals all sneered. Giraffes can't dance, you silly fool. Oh, Gerald, that's so weird. Now Gerald just got up the guts to go try to dance, and all of his friends aren't being very kind about his dance skills. How do you think that makes Gerald feel? Do you think it makes him feel good? Or do you think it makes him feel a little sad? I think it probably makes him feel sad. If I was trying to do something that I wasn't very good at and I was being brave and my friends were saying things like, you're weird and you can't dance, that wouldn't make me feel very good. Let's see what happens. Gerald simply froze up. He was rooted to the spot. There I right, he thought. I'm useless. Oh, I feel like such a clock. So he crept off from the dance floor, and he started walking home. He never felt so sad before. So sad and so alone. Poor Gerald. Then he found a little clearing, and he looked up to the sky. The moon can be so beautiful, he whispered with a sigh. <clears throat> Excuse me, coughed a cricket, who'd seen Gerald earlier on. But sometimes, when you're different, you just need a different song. Listen to the swaying grass, and listen to the trees. To me, the sweetest music is those branches in the breeze. So imagine that the lovely moon is playing just for you. Everything makes music if you really want it to. Can you guys think of something that makes music that's not actually music? Let's see. When I went for a walk this morning, I heard some frogs in the pond making some noise and that sounded very musical and i heard the birds up in the trees chirping and that sounded very musical and pretty there's lots of things around you that make music you just have to use your ears and listen all right let's finish that the cricket smiling and picked up his violin then gerald felt his body do the most amazing thing his heels had started shuffling, making circles on the ground. His neck was gently swaying, and his tail was swishing around. What do you think he's doing? He threw his arms <gasps> out sideways, and he swung them everywhere. 
then he did a backward somersault and knocked up in the air. Gerald felt so wonderful. His mouth was open wide. I'm dancing. Yes, I'm dancing. I'm dancing, Gerald cried. Then, one by one, each animal who had been there at the dance arrived while Gerald boogied on and watched him, quite entranced. They shouted, it's a miracle. We must be in a dream. Gerald's the best dancer that we've ever seen. How did you learn to dance like that? Please, Gerald, tell us how. But Gerald simply twirled around and finished with a bow. Then he raised his head and looked up at the moon and stars above. We all can dance, he said, when we find music that we love. Very nice. That is so true. We can all dance and do things if we just put our minds to it and if we believe in ourselves. So I think that's kind of the moral of the story is, you know, find find something that you like to do and believe in yourself and know that you can do it. And I think you can do anything. I hope you enjoyed that book. It's one of my favorites. Have a great day.